girls take about nine months to develop eggs and sperm inside the body with many of the genre that we're working with. And so they'll only release those at one time during the year. And in order to be successful, each coral colony has to release those what we call gametes, eggs and sperm, all at the exact same moment so that they'll be able to fertilize. When the diving team then actually observes setting, they, they will find that setting coral and they'll come up to the surface and they'll signal to the boat. And on the boat we have a large team waiting. And then that team will jump into the water with a lot of butterfly nets and jar. And they'll get in and they'll wait by that coral which is set. And as the eggs actually start to come out after that like 15 to 20 minute of setting, then they'll take those, those nets and actually catch the, the, what we call egg and sperm bundles that are coming up out of the coral. After the spawning is complete, then we'll take the net over to one area and we'll transfer the eggs from the net into a jar. And then the diving team will swim back to the boat with that jar still closed with all the, the gamut bundle, the egg and sperm bundle inside. We then bring that up to the boat and then we fertilize the, the eggs on the boat. After they're fertilized, then we remove the fertilized eggs, which we now call embryos. We remove those from the fertilization buckets and we transfer them to our culturing tanks. Over the course of several days, those embryos would develop. They'll first become what we call ciliated, meaning that they have little hairs off of them and they'll spin around in place, and then they'll go more oval shaped and then actually start swimming around. At that time, then we put our own artificial substrates inside. And we make what we call little coral mushrooms. And so we use uh, candy molds. And then we'll put all those down on the bottom of the tank and we'll kind of use some different chemical triggers to trick the coral larvae into settling down onto those concrete pieces. Half of the, the concrete mushrooms then with the recruits on them will actually move out to our midwater coral nurseries out in the ocean. And we do that, one, to split the batch in case we ever had a power outage or some problem in our tanks, but it also allows the corals to develop in their natural conditions. There's scientific papers which uh, will debate one, one or the other, either culturing them in the tanks or putting them in the ocean, so we just kind of do both. And we find that in the ocean we get a little bit lower survival because we have predation and, and we have herbivores like the parrot fishes and the sea urchins will be grazing on, on the seaweed or the filamentous algae and they'll also inadvertently remove some of the coral recruits. But in the ocean we get faster growth rates of the coral. How long the, the mushroom stays on the nursery really depends on the species that we're working with. With fast growing species, like the branching corals, then we can leave it on there for a period of one to two years, at which time it's quite mature and we can actually move it out in the reef. And with the species that we've had success with over the last several years, has been a very slow growing coral species. It's a very resilient, good reef builder, but it only grows about one centimeter per year. So this coral that's just four years old now from our project in 2010 now is about the size of a, a baseball or an apple. Um, and it's about ready to move out onto either the artificial reef or out to the natural reefs. We use our, our coral nurseries for different things. Coral nurseries are a way to rehabilitate broken, damaged, or dying corals, but it's also a way that we can produce a feedstock of corals that we can use in our restoration efforts. Then we can take corals from the nursery and move them right onto that structure, the non-living structure, the rocks, or the rubble, or the dead coral skeleton. In some areas though, we, where areas become disturbed or, or we have different problems, mostly stemming from humans or big storms, things like that, then we can not only lose the corals themselves, the living corals, but we also lose the skeleton. In those areas, we don't actually have structure of the reef on which to place the corals from the nursery. So in those areas then we have to create artificial reefs and we use metal, concrete and other ways to create artificial structure which we can then take corals from our nursery and fill up onto these artificial reefs and with only a very short period of time of a couple of years then those artificial reefs are, look exactly like a natural reef and many people diving there don't even realize that it's an artificial reef. Coral reef scientists are not the most optimistic people. <laughs> Uh, coral reefs all over the world are really being destroyed at, at the alarming rate. 
coral reefs are the planet's most um, most damaged, uh, one of the most damaged, but definitely the most threatened ecosystem. I, for one, am actually a little bit optimistic about our island. Koh Tao is an island which is small enough that we can actually make a difference, but it's also very important. It's got some of the most diverse and abundant coral reefs in all of the Gulf of Thailand. So it is worth saving as well. But the thing that really sets Koh Tao apart is the community, the businesses, and the government that we have on our island. A small percentage, not everybody, but a small percentage of the people here are really working hard to make a difference. Although it's a small percentage, they're a very effective and enthusiastic group of people. And I personally foresee more and more management going on on Koh Tao over the next few years. We've been working hard to make that happen. And what we plan to do is make Koh Tao really a model for other islands in Thailand and hopefully around the world about how to develop. We're not that model now, but we are working towards it. And when I look around the island and I see the great people that we work with, and I see teams of 27 people volunteering their time to come out and sit underwater and stare at a coral for four nights, it really makes me very optimistic for the future of our island.